Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at finding the derivatives of ln functions and how I can use log properties to simplify that process. If you don't remember some of your basic log properties, I'll stick the video link for that topic in the description so you guys can just take a quick look at that and then come back to this video. Here we go. Number one, find dy dx. Y is equal to ln of e to the 5x. I know that ln of e is 1 and when I have an exponent here, this kind of just cancels out and now y can be written as just 5x. So in this case, dy dx is just 5. Easy peasy. Number two, this is a kind of a variation of number one. So the reason why number one you can write the 5x here is there's a rule that says if I have an exponent attached to a log, I can move that exponent to the front as multiplication. So now I have 5x times ln of e or 5x times 1, which is where that 5x is coming from. So in number two, I can apply that same property. I can pull that 3 out in front so that y is equal to 3ln of x squared plus 5x. From here, it's a little bit easier to take the derivative. So since I have a constant in front, I can just bring that 3 down. And then the derivative of ln u, which I can stick down here really quickly, if y is ln u, then dy dx is equal to 1 over u du dx. Or sometimes you'll see this written as u prime over u. So for this one, u is going to be this x squared plus 5x. So when I take the derivative, u prime is 2x plus 5, u is x squared plus 5x. So again, u prime over u. And I really can't do any simplification here, so I'm just going to leave this as is. Number three, I definitely need to rewrite y first. Since I have a cube root here, I know that whenever I have any kind of radical, I need to rewrite that as a fractional exponent before I can take the derivative. So I can write this as ln of x cubed minus 4x plus 2 to the 1 third. And now that I have this exponent attached to whatever I'm taking the ln of, I can move that exponent to the front as multiplication so that I have 1 third ln of x squared minus 4x plus 2. Now when I find dy dx, I can just carry that 1 third down. And then same rule as before, I can do u prime over u. So 2x minus 4 over x squared minus 4x plus 2. These are very rarely going to simplify in any sort of way. So once you get to this step, for the most part, you're usually good to go. Number four, y is equal to ln of x cubed over x to the fourth plus five. Now, for this example, I could let this entire fraction be u. But then what would happen is I would have one over u, so I'd really just flip this. It would be x to the fourth plus five over x cubed times when I do the derivative of u, I would need a quotient rule and that would be kind of a pain. So what I can do instead is apply the rule that says if I have ln of a over b, I can split that up into subtraction, ln of a minus ln of b. So I'm first going to actually rewrite y so that it says ln of x cubed minus ln of x to the fourth plus five. I can rewrite this even one more time by taking this 3 in front now. So I have 3 ln x minus ln of x to the fourth plus 5. Now I have two separate lns that are super easy to take a derivative of. So dy dx is going to be 3 over x. I can bring down the 3. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x. Minus when I take the derivative of this piece, x to the fourth plus 5 is going to be u. And in the numerator, I put u prime, which is 4x cubed. Number five, y is equal to ln of x cubed minus 5 times x squared plus 7x. I have a couple options when I start here. I can either let this entire thing be u and do 1 over this whole product. And then when I do the derivative of u, I would need a product rule, which would end up being long and messy. Option number two is to multiply this out. And then I could do 1 over whatever this product becomes times the derivative of that, in which case I would just need a power rule. However, the easiest option here is going to be to split up this ln into two separate logs using my multiplication rule. So if I have ln of a times b, I can split that up into ln of a plus ln of b. So I can rewrite number 5 as ln of x cubed minus 5 
plus ln of x squared plus 7x. From here, the derivative of ln u is a little bit easier on each of these pieces. So now for dy dx, I can just use the rule that says the derivative of ln u is u prime over u. So u prime in this case would be 3x squared, u is x cubed minus 5. Plus, I can apply the same rule, u is x squared plus 7x, and u prime is 2x plus 7. That is way easier than doing some kind of gigantic product rule and or multiplying this out and then doing a power rule as I go. So this saves you a whole bunch of steps. Number six, y is equal to ln of the square root of x squared plus 2x over x times x cubed minus 1. I definitely do not want to make this whole thing u. I'd be here forever trying to take the derivative of this mess that's inside the ln. So I'm definitely going to use my ln properties to split this thing up. So first off, I can see that I have division, so I can split that up into subtraction. So I would have ln, the square root of x squared plus 2x, minus ln of x times x cubed minus 1. This radical I could rewrite as something to the half, and since I would have an exponent, I can bring that out in front. So I'm going to rewrite y again now so that I have a half ln x squared plus 2x. Lastly, I'm going to split this multiplication up into addition so that I have minus ln x, and I'm going to put this in parentheses because it's going to be minus a sum, so minus ln x plus ln of x cubed minus 1. Now I have all basic ln of u rules. So for dy dx in this first one, I'm going to have 2x squared plus 2x, so I brought down the 2 from the half. And then for my derivative rule, it's going to be u prime over u. So here's u. u prime would be 2x plus 2. Minus the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And I'm going to distribute this negative as I go to get rid of these brackets. So now I have minus. I'm going to have a fraction. Here's u. So I can put that in the denominator. And then u prime is just 3x squared. Again, way easier than doing a gigantic quotient chain product rule if I didn't split all of this up to begin with. That's it for finding derivatives using log properties. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.